Hello everyone, it's Valerie from Shellbrook Handcrafted Soap in Moser River. And uh, I was asked to do a video uh, on showing how I incorporate things. So how I break down my formula for the soap that I'm doing and how I add all of those individual items I might be adding extra. This soap is going to be called The Islander as I just got back from vacation in Prince Edward Island. And, um, the lye liquid will be a mixture of uh, seaweed, kelp, some other stuff that I that comes in from the ocean. I can't think of what it's called right at the minute. Maybe ocean lettuce or something, and um, some of that red iron oxide sand and clay from Prince Edward Island. So I have the tea made, and I strained it to get out scratchy bits of sand, and I didn't want too much of the iron oxide in there because I don't want it to stain the soap. Uh, so that's what that liquid looks like right now and that's what I'll be putting my lye into. And there's incredible benefits in that seaweed and kelp. And uh, just before I go any further I just want to give a shout out to Molly and Stephen McGrath of So Shore Dairy Goats. They make uh, uh, goat milk soap there and she's a lovely lady. And uh, if you'd like to have some uh, lovely soap, uh, please contact her there at uh, Molly McGrath with So Shore Dairy Goats in Prince Edward Island. It was a pleasure to meet you, Molly. How you doing? So um, this this formula is going to uh, consist of what what some people would like to say is an all natural soap, and I'm going to show you um, what I have that's going to go into that. Um, so if my husband will just uh, stop that camera for a minute because I don't want to pan my messy kitchen and I'm going to bring you over to the stove to show you what I have there. So here we are uh, where I heat up my ingredients and uh, so I, I have a frying pan here that's on low and uh, I'll heat up my hard oils in that before I put it in my warm crock pot. This is my sodium lactate my coconut milk and half of that is going to go in the cook and half of it I'll add after. This is my sugar water water, and I'm doing two pounds of soap today so I have two tablespoons of sugar and about one and a half tablespoons of water. But you can mix that with whatever liquid you want. And then I have honey here mixed with a bit of water so it incorporates better. Uh, my essential oils in this are ginger, lime, elemi, sweet orange, and tea tree. Did I say lime? Yeah, I did. Okay. And then I'll be coloring it with, uh, this is some Chinese rhubarb, and what that's going to do, it's going to go in um, what I would call the base, so it turns it a bit reddish like, that, that, like the sand and then I'm going to have some activated charcoal and in this one I have some pumpkin powder and some carrot powder and in this I have chamomile powder and uh, that will be layered in the soap and it's mixed with a tiny bit of glycerin and distilled water. So basically that's what I do with my ingredients and uh, I do not deduct my sodium lactate or the sugar or the honey from my lye liquid, but I do deduct this coconut milk. And then I have the containers that I'm going to put the soap into for swirling with the liquid. And uh, before that soap is ready, I'll heat those up in the microwave and I'll cover them with plastic when I separate it. Okay, so that's basically about it. I'm doing high temperature hot process today and I'm going to heat it up in the crock pot and uh, when the lye is ready and I'm going to add everything, I'll bring, you, I'll bring you back. Okay, thank you. So here we are back, and this is high temperature hot process. And I'm um, going to cook this. Uh, you can see my crock is out of the electronic part, and the oils are about 190, and my lye is about 198, and I'm going to strain it. My husband's going to stir that while I add it because of the stearic acid in it. So if you could stir that, honey. Be 
because of the stir, it gets going to uh, solidify pretty quick. Thank you. And excuse the stick blender there. my coconut milk and um, whether you're cooking soap uh, or doing it cold process whether it's high temperature or low temperature make sure you wear safety gear to protect yourself because the lye is active and it can burn you can hurt you so I'm just going to bring that to a medium trace I'm just going to cover that up and uh, I'm basically going to let that cook on its own and uh, if there's any changes I'll turn the camera back on. Okay so it's been six minutes and uh, as you can see this is rising up I'm basically there's a little piece here on top and there's some just down there on the sides so I'm basically just letting really this cook on its own. <coughs> I'm going to whisk this up. Um, I had also added one teaspoon of kale and clay to the oils <coughs> when I stick blended them before the lye. And I'm just going to whisk this up. You can see that that's all applesauce. Actually, I'm going to put my glasses on again because uh, that is uh, real loose. I don't want to get splashed, even though I have glasses on. I'm going to get splashed in the eye. I actually think I could have used a lot more of that red in there because it didn't hurt it one bit, but um, from the sand. So I'm just going to cover that back up and uh, well actually I think what I might do is uh, I might stick blend that a bit. It's pretty soupy. I'll stick blend that about a minute.
about 45 seconds. And uh, this, this video is basically for newer soapers, so that's why I'm explaining everything, but um, this batter is really hot. So just be careful you don't burn your fingers. I'm just going to cover that up and let it set. I'll time it for three minutes. Shut the camera off, but if something happens before then, I'll bring you back on. So I just came back on because I wanted to say there's, there's many, many um, different ways you might want to do your hot process soap. There's high temperature, low temperature. You can do it in the microwave, in a crock pot, in a glass bowl, in the oven, on top of the stove. And uh, try to encourage everybody, you make it like you want to make it. And you certainly don't have to add um, all the extras that I do. That's totally up to you. Um, I enjoy trying new things and I, I love my soap, how it treats my skin. So this one basically I looked at it as uh, a soap from the island and um, I wanted to incorporate that in there. So I used quite a bit of tea and um, some of that sand in there uh, that I strained and um, I've got the, because it's a farming industry over there too, I never thought, actually I could have put potato starch in there because they're big for potatoes over there as well. Uh, so when you look at making your soap, you've got to see what kind of soap, uh, have a vision in mind of what you want that soap to be. And that was my vision, so I broke it down from there. So I took the lye liquid amount and um, I think it was 12.15 liquid. I think I rounded it off to 12.25. I'm doing this at 38% lye liquid, and uh, I used 8.25 ounces of the tea, an ounce of aloe vera juice, and um, three ounces of coconut milk. And of course then I have the honey, the sodium lactate, um, yogurt that I'm going to put in, and the sugar. Uh, when I did this formula uh, on soap calc, I super fatted up front. 5% and I have 2% extra metal foam oil super fat going in here after the cook. So the beeper just went off and that was three minutes. Um, so I'm just going to check this out and uh, it's not ready yet and it separated some. So um, depending on your formula and how high your temperatures are will dictate how fast that's going to cook or go to Vaseline stage. So right now, when I'm whisking that, that's actually apple uh, potato. And by the looks of that heat coming out of there, I think that's going to go to Vaseline quite quick. I could have did this in a glass bowl, uh, but for the specific reason of teaching, I just thought it'd be easier if you could see it in a crock. Uh, a lot of people are more comfortable with that when they're learning. Okay, so that is all potato, and it's almost all Vaseline, but I'm going to shut the camera off and leave it for two minutes and bring you back. Okay, so we're back and uh, it's, it's all thick Vaseline now and I checked the pH on it and it's good to go and so now I'm going to add uh, the super fat the metal foam oil 2% of my oils and uh, I'll put this formula on and uh, just so you can see what I did and that's up to you if you want to use the formula or if you want to 
tweak it is really good if you don't have everything that I'm using. Okay, that was the rest of the coconut and the sugar water I just put in. This is my two tablespoons of yogurt. Actually, that's really white. And uh, then I'm going to add my 4% of sodium lactate which is a really great humectant. It's good for your skin. And uh, it also helps to harden the bar of soap. Now, good benefits from that. And the honey, I'm just going to wait a bit before I add it. So you can see how loose that is right now. And what I am going to do is I'm going to cover that and let that set about five to seven minutes. And I'll bring you back. So here we are back. And uh, it's quite loose. I think that will change a bit because of the... Uh, Essential oils sometimes, or fragrance oils for sure, will can thicken up your soap. So I just added the honey, and I make sure that that's incorporated really well. Dig down the bottom. And uh, this is my essential oils that are at, uh, they're warm, because they were setting over there on the stove. And I just see a piece of hard soap came off in my batter. Hopefully that'll melt. And once I get this mixed up, I'm going to separate it into the quantities that I would like to have. So here's my cups, and they're full of uh, hot water. Can you pass me those uh, bot botanical herbs there, huh? So that's going to be the um, activated charcoal, and I'm not doing a lot of that so that's about it for me and then can you pass me the small piece of saran wrap my husband's a big help to me when we're videoing so that's the activated charcoal and I'm mixing that up it's not going to be really black more of a dark gray. Where was that saran wrap? Okay. So I'm just going to cover that up while I get the rest ready. And this is going to be the chamomile. I'm going to have this in the middle.
chamomile, where are you? It's tomato. Okay, here's my chamomile. I actually really like how chamomile colors soap. It gives it a real kind of a greenish color. I think it's beautiful for a natural color. You just want to make sure that those are. And if you're not happy uh, with the thickness, you can always add a teaspoon of hot water to it and that will loosen it up. This one is going to be the, um, and there's no lye left in that, and it's cooled down considerably, but you don't have to use your fingers here, you can use a spoon. Whatever you would desire to do that. So this is the um, carrot and pumpkin powder. Actually, you can really smell the pumpkin. Doesn't look like that's going to color that too much, but we'll see. have the uh, Chinese rhubarb powder for this but I also uh, while I was waiting I mixed up some tomato powder because uh, I'm not sure what the color actually is going to be like here So I think I will add some of that tomato powder. And boy, does it smell like tomato. So that's a mixture of that rhubarb powder and tomato powder. So I think I might just add a bit more of that. There's a little bit left in there. I just added a bit of water to it. So the battery just went dead on the camera and my husband plugged it in. I stirred in the rest of, uh, I don't know if it caught it, but I had added just a little bit more that was left in those um, little containers. Here's my two pound mold and I'm going to put half of this in. half of the tomato and Chinese rhubarb. I really like that blend of essential oil. going to cover this back up to keep it as moist as possible. And how I'm uh, layering this is uh, trying to do it symmetrical, so I'll put half of the charcoal in there. It's 
It's just going to be a thin layer. Then I'm going to do half of the pumpkin and carrot. Beautiful ingredients for your skin. And that's the main thing I just want to say about doing soap is that how it looks is nice, how it smells is great, but if the soap doesn't treat your skin really good, then looks, well, it's just not that much, is it? And I'm going to put almost all of this chamomile in here. I'm just going to save a bit to put on the top. <clears throat> And I'm just going to put that over on the stove. And here's the uh, pumpkin and carrot. As you can see, it's very manageable. And I'm going to save some of that for the top. Cover that up, please. And I'm not saving any of the charcoal. I'm going to put all of this right on there. a little bit thicker. I'm thinking it must be because of the charcoal, I guess. And then I'm putting the rest of the base on with the rhubarb tomato powder. And actually that came out a nice color, whether it will stay through the saponification, I don't know. It's quite a nice smell, quite um, refreshing. And I'm going to bang this on the floor. And um, the swirl I'm going to do is just going to be like a circling swirl. So I'm going to put it in the middle, down to the bottom, and I'll just start basically with little circles and get bigger. Maybe I'll just circle around. And then I'll just go across once. So it's sort of like a box of chocolates that doesn't have a, a list of telling you what you're going to get. I just hope that turns out really good. So um, I am going to add a teeny tiny bit of water to those other ones. up on top where they've been sitting there. And 
I add uh, about half a teaspoon to that one in there. So I'm just going to stir these up. I can try to make a design on the top. And uh, I have found that by spraying with hot water, it really helps the soap to stick better when I'm laying it, layering it on top. You don't have to do that. It's just something I do. That's the chamomile. And then I'm just going to give it uh, another spray. And I'm going to just do take a chopstick and swirl it around. And you can end up uh, over swirling, and that's normally what I do. <clears throat> but there you go. I'm going to clean up the edges on this. And uh, I'm going to put that in the freezer for uh, probably four hours, three to four hours. And I'll take it out and put it in the fridge for an hour, and then I'll cut it. And uh, I'll post pictures of this. So I hope you enjoy it, and I will put the formula on there as well. And uh, you have a great day. Thank you for watching.